the crazy and sad part about this video is that I'm supposed to be covering a debate. This video is supposed to be the, us reacting to a debate. Playing clips from a debate between Kamala Harris, Kamala, communist comrade Kamala Harris, and President Trump. Kamala versus Trump is supposed to be playing on the screen right now. A debate was supposed to take place September 4th. But no, we ducking, dodging, and hiding. I don't see how people are, are, are clapping for this Harris Walls ticket. The Democrats could have did better, man. I'm telling you, they 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 were they could they could have came up with a way better ticket, man. Ducking, dodging, hiding. We're running on joy and identity politics. Can we get the black vote? She's a she's a woman of color. She's a black woman, even if she isn't black or not. But can we can we're running on joy? In identity politics, and that's all we're gonna hear to November. You know, they heard her economic plan. Everybody bashed it. Even people on, on, on her side, Democrats, everybody bashed it. Change of position. She says her values have not changed. Not one single vote. Worst approval rating. Most unpopular. Well, we've allowed the media to build a candidate. We are not against a, a candidate. We are against the machine, y'all. Well, I'm going to show you some. Let me show you. Let me just show you. You know, you can't make this stuff up. And then she disrespect. So unfit. I'm telling you, worse than Biden. Wor worse than Biden. Then she disrespected. I mean, just, 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 just. she wasn't on the phone. Like I tell y'all, man. And if she was, I, I mean, all they doing some the, the debate re re rehearsing. Debate rehearsing. We know she's going to get the questions early. They're going to send her off to camp, and uh, <laughs> she's going to take less less naps than Biden. She won't take as many naps as Biden did. And more rehearsing. I can't wait for September 10th, man. But I, I just don't see how she goes past a 200 in the Electoral College. I'm sorry. I know people, uh, again, I, I'm just being honest. I don't get I don't, I don't see how she gets past 170. They could have did a better, uh, uh, they could have had a better ticket than this, man. You know, just being honest. Just being completely honest. Today is today. And yesterday was today yesterday. Tomorrow will be today tomorrow. <laughs> so live today. So the future today will be as the past today. As it is tomorrow. That's what I expect. If we get one of those clips like that, man, in, in, in the debate, and Trump just exposes her for who she is, and then shows the, the side of, you know, exposes the moderators and, and their whole networking platform as well, and, and just expose everything, everybody, you know. And exposed all the corruption. If Trump points out everything that's taking place, man, it's over for him, y'all. It is over for him. You know? It is over. But, again, this delete, it's, it's completely different, man. It, it, it's obvious. Who puts Amer Americans for America first? Who's showing leadership? 
is I already put out a, a full plan. Promises to we the people. There isn't no Project 2025 for Trump's presidency. Sorry to break your little hearts. He isn't going to do this, 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 and that. Fake news, the mainstream media, the bias reporting. They want you to think Trump's this, this, then that. He's going to do this, this, and that. It's crap, man. Have you seen what the fellas went through? And the thing is, he can be on a yacht or somewhere on a, in a nice resort or on an island somewhere and join the rest of his life. But the man is still holding outdoor rallies. Behind a bulletproof glass. Lord knows what he suffers from right now. With PTSD, anxiety. You know what I'm saying? Being shot live on air. First thing that they said, oh, staged. Oh, Trump fell down on, off stage. Again, he gets, he has 90% negative coverage. Kamala has 90% positive coverage. One reason why they, they've, you know, uh, millions are, are, are Trump deranged now. But mil more, but even millions are waking up. Anti-Trumpers, never Trumpers, are on the Trump train this year. Democrats, people that voted Democrat for years, on the Trump train this year. The difference is clear, man. Again, I don't see how she makes it past one seventy. One, I'm telling you, one seventy. You know, I'm, I'm just saying. But this fellow's answering questions. Even after the interview, uh, was it before or after the interview? I, I, I got to go take the whole thing out, but he's answering questions from the audience. This is supposed to be a debate tonight, or the night this took place. This is supposed to be, we're supposed to be covering a full-blown debate. It should be, they, they, they should have been three debates. We the people, three debates. She hasn't received one single vote. You seen what took place in 2020, 2019. Wor worst approval rating, most unpopular. Not one single vote. But hey, we're going to keep our puppet hidden. I do all this research to ask you questions and, and you just go. Uh, but we came here also to hear from the people of Harrisburg. Before we get to uh, the people, I want to again introduce, we introduced him last night uh, on the show. Uh, Dave McCormick is the Republican Senate candidate from Pennsylvania. <laughs> Senator, great to have you. I'll give you a chance to say a couple of words. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Sean, and thank you for Mr. President for being here in the Keystone State. And the Keystone State is going to decide the future of the country, put you back in the White House and a majority in the Senate. So thank you. Thank you, Bill. And, uh, you know, it's, Mr. President, it's a scary time in the world. Our adversaries around the world, Iran, China, Russia, North Korea are testing us. They're challenging us. We've lost deterrence. They think America's weak. They think America's on retreat. Right. And my question to you is on day one, when you're back in the White House, how do we restore deterrence? How do we bring strength and capability back to our military? And how do we make sure that uh, everybody in the, in, in the world knows that America is back? So thank you, David, and good luck with the race. It's really important that you win. I hope you're going to vote. He's a great gentleman and a great... He's a great warrior. Uh, the first thing we have to do, we have to strengthen our country from within. 
And we have a lot of bad people from within, but we have to straighten it. We have to, number one, have a border like we had it four years ago, which was strong, where the wrong people didn't get in. We have to have that. The other thing, we want to become, again, energy independent. We were energy independent four years ago. And what we really want is energy dominance. And then, as you know, we re I rebuilt the entire military and we had it like nobody has ever had it before. And then this guy gave away $85 billion worth of equipment to Afghanistan in the most embarrassing moment in the history of our country. But we have a lot more than that. We rebuilt the military. We want to be strong, but we want to do it peace through strength. That's what we want. Peace through strength. We shouldn't have to use our military. But we're going to have the greatest military in the world. Thank you, David. All right, uh, ma'am, hi, uh, what's your name? Uh, my name is Deborah Williams. Hi, Deborah. how are you? I'm good now. <laughs> Hi, Deborah. Oh, because of me or because of the president? Oh, I'm just guessing. No, I'm kidding. I plead the fifth. <laughs> Good answer. Um, Mr. President, I want to thank you for coming and sharing your time with us today. Thank you, Deborah. Um, what could you share that you've learned during the first time being in the Oval Office for those who are hesitant to vote for you now? So we need a strong president. And you know, I actually think we had a very stable uh, administration, but we were hit with this weaponization. We were hit the weaponized. They've never done this before. The weaponization, all of the different Russia, Russia, Russia hoax, all of the different hoaxes. And we won every single one of them. The most important thing, and I found it, and you could say this is true in business also, uh, we have to get the right people. When I first went there, 2016, we were, I had a lot of good people, I had a lot of good advice, but I put people in that in some cases were not what I really wanted because I didn't know much about Washington. I was there 17 times in my whole life and I wasn't in DC very much, but I got to know them and I got to know them the hard way. And I know the good ones, the bad ones, the weak ones, the, the smart ones, the dumb ones. I know them all now. And, and the, key, the key, and we had great ones. I mean, economic development, we did so well. The military, we did fantastically well. We knocked out ISIS, 100% of the ISIS caliphate. We have some great people in the military, not the ones that you see on television, but great people. But a big key to running it is get the right people. You put the right person and the right group of people at the heads of these massive agencies, you're gonna have tremendous success. And I know now the people, and I know them better than anybody would know them. So thank you very much. Thank you, Deborah. Ma'am, hi. Ma'am, what's your name? Sue Helm. Hey, I'd like to welcome you to Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. We love you both. So uh, that's thank, you. thank you. I'm a small business owner. I'm the owner of Century 21 at the Helm Real Estate. Good. The four years of your presidency, Mr. Trump, were the best economically I have experienced in the 35 years I own this business. <laughs> and my question is, what are your plans and policies to restore the economy so small business owners can thrive and make America great once again? Good. Thank you. Good. You know, we had a woman who was uh, very spectacular, Linda McMahon, and she ran the Small Business Administration, did a phenomenal job. And that's a very important group for what we're talking about with small business. But uh, to put it a little simpler, we're going to have low interest rates. We're going to have low taxes. We're going to give you tremendous incentive to grow and to build your business. And, you know, a lot of people have said that. They said, one person who didn't support me he said, I must admit, I had the most successful four years of my life, but I'm going to vote for some. And I said, and now that person came back to me. I don't want that person. I don't want that person. You know, they say you should take everybody, but that, that's not the way I'm built. It's one of those little problems. This person, no, this was in the Republican primary, said, I had the best four years I've ever had under Trump, but I'm going to support this one. I said, that's the end of that. You know, when they came back, 
But we're going to lower interest rates. We're going to have low taxes. We're going to have tremendous incentives for small business. You know, small business is much bigger than big business in this country when you add it all up. And we're going to take care of small business in this country. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Sir, uh, what's your name? Uh, Travis Finkenbinder. I'm from uh, Palmyra, Pennsylvania. I'd um, like to welcome uh, you both here, and uh, it's an honor to, uh, to stand before you. Thank you, Travis. Um, Mr. President, is it possible to correct the extensive damage the current administration has caused related to our safety and security? From the border crisis to the plethora of weapons left behind in Afghanistan, I fear for my three adolescent sons. At night, what do I tell Kale, Kate, and Cole? about their safety and their future of this great nation. Well, the first thing you should do is pray. Amen. Because what they've done to our country, right? What they've done to our country, what these, what these, and I hate to use the word, what these stupid people, naive people, but bad people, you know, weaponization. Again, they're after me. I got more court cases. On Friday, I have one. On Monday, I have one. And they do that for very bad reasons. They don't want you to campaign. They want to keep you off the campaign. They want to try and take as much money as possible instead of putting it in. But let me just tell you, yeah. the hardest problem we have, because a smart president will be able to get along with Russia, China. There are a lot of reasons why. But the biggest problem we have is they've allowed 21 million people into our country. And, this, and I told you last night, I tell you tonight, it's the single biggest problem. They've poisoned our country. They're coming in from prisons. They're coming in from mental institutions. Terrorists are coming in. The criminals are coming off the streets in Caracas, Venezuela, but all over the world, not just in South America. It's the single hardest problem that we would have never had. If I were president, you wouldn't have that problem. You wouldn't have inflation. You wouldn't have Russia attacking Ukraine. You wouldn't have had October 7th with Israel. You wouldn't have had the Afghanistan disaster, which I think is the most single most embarrassing day in the history of our country where they have billions of dollars of equipment. We lost 13 great, great soldiers, and I celebrated and honored their wonderful, they call them their children, then they are their children, their wonderful children, their, their kids. I went to Arlington Cemetery with them the other day, and at their request, at their request, and Sean knows this better than anybody, and it was very tough for me to get there, I will tell you. I don't want to say that, but it was very tough. I was in a different part of the world, frankly. And I got there, and wow. we had a beautiful... Wow, wow, I didn't even know that. You know, and he's all over the place, and he's over here, he's way over here. And he made it happen, man. He shows up. You know? And what did Kamala Harris do? What, they, what did they do? What did her advisors post? Disrespectful. A publicity stunt. She couldn't even reach out to the family. And I love when prayers go out. And those go out to the Gold Star families, man. Y'all seen the, the previous videos we did on that and uh seeing that ad. Um, you know, it bought it brought tears to our eyes, our eyes, man, for real. It was very, very powerful, man. You know. Salute to the ones, love to the ones who made the ultimate sacrifice, man. But again, it never, never should have happened. Peace. No wars. Peace. A couple of hours together. First we had a ceremony, and then we had a, a we went down to the grave sites, and they said, sir, could we have a picture with my son. In one case, it was a daughter. Could we have a picture with my daughter? We took pictures. We had stayed for a long time. And then I left. And that was it. I thought it was beautiful. And those people are phenomenal. What they've done. Joe Biden and Kamala killed those children because of their incompetence. Just like they had, just like they had a gun that killed them. And I went home. And I thought it was a beautiful thing. I told my wife, I told a great first lady who people love, they love her. But I said, 
It was so sad and yet so beautiful and joyful in a sense. I mean, the people, they had something that was very special. And I went there and, you know, I had them up to Bedminster. I got to know many of them, most of them. But I get home and I get a call from one of my people, sir. They're saying that you use this for public relations purposes. And you know what happened? It was so beautiful. Every one of those people made a video to say that Donald Trump came there. I got enough publicity. I don't need publicity. I'd like to get half the publicity. I'd be very happy. But they said that, and, and you, you saw the videos. The videos became very, very well-known and famous, actually. Some beautiful statements that I went there. I got nothing out of that except to take care of people that were not taken care of by our government. And Ooh. Joe Biden and Kamala should call those people and apologize because that was the most incompetent withdrawal in the history of our country. There has never been anything. So think of it. We took the military out first. You're supposed to take the military out last. Once the military was gone, they had free shots at us. But we took the military out first and then it began. We lost 13 soldiers. Many were horribly wounded, meaning no legs, no arms. The face was obliterated. Many, we don't even talk about those people and we have to. We left Americans behind and you cover that better than anybody. We left many Americans behind and we left billions and billions of dollars of brand new military equipment behind that now they are one of the largest sellers of military equipment in the world, Afghanistan. They're selling the equipment that we just walked away from. It, is, it was so incompetent, but to be with those people uh, was a real honor, I have to tell you. And for them to go out of their way, and every one of them made a video, they said, sir, could you take a picture next to the grave of my son? I said, of course. Could you imagine if I said, no, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. But every one of those people appreciated it. And every one of them made a tape and they sent it out. And it became very viral, as they say nowadays. And it was a great honor for me to be there. Thank you. And I should, I should add, Kamala Harris and Joe Biden were both invited. And this was not, you knew these families. You, you had met with them at Bedminster. Yes. You were familiar with them. I knew them. them. And they, they invited you, you went, and they said, would you take a picture? And then you did, and then you were attacked. Yep. By, and then the families were furious at Kamala about it. Uh, I think this is going to be the last question. Uh, what's your name, sir? Hi, uh, Alistair Hackett from Spring Lake, New Jersey. Hey, Alex. Um, thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. I'm a recent college graduate and am concerned with the growing influence of wokeness in many of our top institutions. Mm. We saw mm. General Milley take this to new heights under his leadership in the military. What is your plan to combat radical ideology in the military and in our corporations? Well, first of all, Milley. <laughs> that day in... Congress, where Milley proclaimed his wokeness, was an embarrassment to our country. And remember this, we don't have a woke military. We have some guys at the top that talk it, but you couldn't convince them to be woke if you were screaming at them for five weeks. We took out 100% of the ISIS caliphate in four weeks. It was supposed to take five years. And these are... And I got to meet the real generals, and they are unbelievable. Our military is unbelievable. Remember it. Unbelievable. There's no woke here. There's no woke here. And, and all we're going to do is you go out, you get your degree, you work hard, you're going to see a different country. We have to get elected. If we don't get elected, I don't know what's going to happen to our country. I just don't know. They're so bad. And normally I wouldn't say that. I'd say, well, they, you know, they're working. They're a Democrat. These aren't Democrats. These are people long beyond Democrats. When I used to say to Sean on his show, I'd say our country, Sean, will never be a socialist country. And it won't. It'll be a communist country. They skipped socialism. They totally, we cannot let this happen to our country because if it does happen, we'll never be able to come back. We'll never be able to make a comeback from it. So we're gonna have a big election. This is a very, Pennsylvania, a very important, the Commonwealth, and you never wanna call it a state. The Commonwealth. If you ever call it a state, I've seen guys, 
I've seen their political career ruined by saying the state of Pennsylvania. No, you never want to call it a state. Now, I'll tell you how dishonest they are. They'll take that one little statement where I said the state of Pennsylvania and they'll play it. The state of Pennsylvania, they'll cut it. Well, there's you one never other wanna, thing. Let me just, because they're fake. The, the, and, and one thing we should say, not him and not Fox. And we have a couple of others out there that are good. But the biggest, a great enemy to this country is the fake news media. It's a big, big enemy. And they have to change their ways. They right. have to change their ways. Before we let the president go, because this is airing part two on on. Thursday night, I want to ask you one the final question. In five nights, you'll be on the stage, not with me, but with Kamala Harris. Now, if I'm going to make a prediction, I think she's going to try and annoy, agitate, irritate, frustrate, and piss you off, to use a phrase. And are you aware of how she debates and probably every yeah. name in the war, every name in the book she can call you and uh, without giving away your tactic. Yeah, I, I, you don't want to do that. But, you know, when I had Biden, you and I had the same discussion yeah. and I let him talk. I'm going to let her talk because, you know, <laughs> you've all seen it. There are those that say that Biden is smarter than she is. OK. <laughs> And if that's the case, we have a problem. But, you know, debating's an interesting thing. I've been in many debates. I think I probably have won because of debating, maybe. You know, we had a lot of debates with the Republicans. Then we had Crooked Hillary. We had a lot of different people we had to debate. And we had some great debates. You do remember the Rosie O'Donnell debate. Remember Rosie? <laughs> Rosie O'Donnell. That's a real, she's a real great one. Isn't she a great one? Anyway, but, but. A debate is interesting. You really, you can go in with all the strategy you want, but you have to sort of feel it out as the debate's taking place. I've seen it. You go in there and you have a strategy. Mike Tyson made the statement, everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it was a brilliant statement. It's a brilliant sure. statement. So I could tell Sean exactly what I'm going to do, but, uh, you know, things change. It depends a lot on ABC. Uh, will they be fair or not? If they're not going to be fair, I'm going to be a little bit different than if they are. I hope they're going to be fair. We're putting a lot of reliance on a network which is known for being extremely hostile to the people in this room and to, I think, 75, 80 percent of the country, if you want to really know the truth. Yep. But, Sean, all I can say is this. You know, I've seen Mitt Romney go and lock himself into a log cabin for four or five weeks, and then he came out and he was horrible in the debate. He couldn't talk. He gained great knowledge. He couldn't talk. And Candy Crowley came out and she made a terrible statement that turned out to be wrong, but it destroyed the guy. But look, you have to... I, the way I look at debating, I think I've been really practicing all my life for this stuff. I mean, ultimately, that's what it's sort of about. So it'll be a, it'll be an interesting it'll be an interesting evening. And the Biden debate was a very interesting evening. I was sort of surprised by it a little bit by, you know, what he did and the way he reacted. And you don't know how somebody's going to react, even a professional. You don't know how they're going to react. And you have to sort of go with it as you get up there, Sean. I'd love to give you an answer. This is what I'm going to do, Sean. But when you get up there, you sort of, because I've done a lot of it. I went from never well, having debated the, to having done a lot of debates. But if you know she's going to try and annoy you, but that's well, not Well, I think happen. we have a bigger problem. I think that ABC will try and annoy I me. I bet that's too. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> President Donald Trump. Thank you, Harris. Man. Oh, boy, I can't wait, y'all. Hope y'all are ready for this upcoming Tuesday, man. But again, there was supposed to be a debate. But um, he came out and did a whole, whole sit down, man. A whole, it's just uncom uncomparable, man. You know? Uncomparable. These campaigns are uncomparable, man. It, the, the difference is clear, you guys. And again, I just don't see how she makes it past 200 in the Electoral College. You know? You see, he has the proven track record. The leadership is there, man. You know? 
And I love how he told, you know, we got to pray, man, for real. We're living in some dark times, man. Dark times. It's corrupt, and they said, stay woke. It's crap, man. But we got to save America, man. And it has to be too big to rig. We encourage everybody to go out and vote. You know what I'm saying? I know everybody's waiting for this debate. We're going to be there to cover it. And hey, I love y'all. Bless you all and your families. And I'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace and love, y'all.